Hello, everybody. The name is Michael Lerner Jr., and I am here with Yes Again, once again with Juku. And yes, no Squired. No offense, Squired. It's just that this time, this might, I want to be sure you this perfectly because this is the first time I'm ever doing a catch up interview. The first interview I did with Juku was with Squired when they headlined Mercury Lounge with Danny Cara, CEO Park. Such an incredible show that was. I still remember, I still have memories. I still actually love how that show was. Absolutely incredible. So this is going to be my third time ever seeing Juku live at the Hero Quest Tour with Steve Aoki. Yes, the owner of Dimmap who has left his mark in the EDM industry, I believe, for the better, ever since Wonderland 2012 and to right now him doing the Neon Future Era and to him doing the Six Aoki Future Rave EP and now to this, I have to ask Juku, how does it feel to be the one to close out this incredible tour? Honestly, it's been crazy, and as you know, I've lived in New York um, for a long amount of my life. Mm -hmm. So coming back to New York after moving out, and not only playing here at Terminal Five, but playing here with Steve Aoki, like that's a fucking dream come true. Excuse my language. No, 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 no one freaking cares <laughs> except for me because I have kept my no curse, my most wearing thing my entire life, like twenty three years, twenty four <laughs> years and counting. Oh, but yes, yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. I'm clean like that. But anyway, I'm so happy and honored that someone as incredible as Steve Aoki has noticed the power and beauty in you. I mean, I think what? Your sophomore EP is going to be coming out in his label of Dimmac. I'm yeah. curious to kind of know, so far I think there has been two EPs. The first one was with Moving Castle, when you know we have War Just Lost with Mila Killa. Yeah. Is there going to be any differences? In the second EP, like, will there be, will there be like a change of feeling? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, Warmth, which was my um, my release on Moving Castle, shout mm -hmm. out to Vanilla Killer and Brett. Um, that was all about me finding myself and finding um, warmth and what I saw as a cold world. Mm -hmm. And now, like, I feel like I'm starting to find my my footing and how I am as an individual and who I am. And I'm starting to explore a lot more emotions um, that that really engross me like on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so with this album, it's called Scarlet Dreams or Lavender Dreams and Scarlet Nightmares. Mm -hmm. um, I have synesthesia, which means I can see colors when I make visual, when I make music or when I listen to music, right. I can see it. Grizz would love you. Yeah. Literally, literally his first track in Rainbow Brain literally is like you can feel and you can see colors in your mind. So uh, is I, I know the last interview we had, you mentioned like, you know, when you were starting to create music, you had this like moment in time when you were in Japan and you were seeing the colors, seeing the rain fall like it through through a window. Did that kind of like, I don't know if that was like the start of you like noticing you had synesthesia or, or did it like grow since then? Yeah, honestly it grew around that time because when I was making visuals, I, I started realizing like a lot of my visuals are either scarlet or red or lavender or lavender purple and as i got to know my music more by creating more music i um i started making like a lot more intense music like a lot more high energy driven stuff that i can play at shows like this and then um whenever i listen back to that music it's scarlet or red and then when i have like my feelsy emotional music a lot of the stuff that i heard on warm that's lavender so I feel like there's a spectrum, like like it's not always gonna be scarred and lavender, it might be somewhere in the middle. But yeah, that's um that's the premise of the EP. That, that that's really great to hear. So for to know that like you know warmth is kinda like the lavender color, this EP that's coming up is gonna be more scarlets or it's gonna be a split between. Split so, between. So yeah. how many tracks are probably getting? Um about seven come from so far. Okay, I was I was kind of thinking will it be six because I feel like three will be scarlet, three will be lavender, yeah. one will be hard, one will be kind of like soft. So it's amazing to hear that, and I, it makes you kind of wonder like, is there any color or any type of style of music you learn to stronger? Like, are you more are you more of like the feels the type of music like let's say Just Lost with Nilla Killa, or are you more of like a hard 
stronger bass type of guy, like we listen to songs like Icarus or yeah, yeah, yeah. or with you and Rossi Euphoria. This just just putting it out there. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, like it's a it's a blend of everything. And one thing that I've been trying to, I guess, focus on as an artist is my own emotions. And like I'm trying to not worry too much about genres, not worry too much about energies that um, that are part of like the music that I'm building. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to build a universe around the um, the emotions that I have so I can express it as an artist. So, Understood. So but, yeah. But this but here's the thing, you mentioned the word universe, but now this begs the question, a lot of your posts that you put on Instagram says pretty much the same thing over and over again that a new world begins or a new world begins again. Yeah, so yeah. is this world going to evolve into a universe now? Yeah, yeah. So like I I had this thing where I would always say another world begins. Mm -hmm. Um and pretty much for every single song that I make, I'm I'm imagining creating another world in, in this universe that, that I create as an artist. So the Juku universe. Oh so yeah. when you say another world begins is like each like song or you say each kind of like song remix or flip you make it is kind of like existing in its own planet. Yeah, exactly. And you are the sun. Yeah, or sun or whatever. I'm I, I'm just saying I'm saying I I, I know that I I did not know it was, it was like more towards like you know an astronomic type of type type of idiom where it's like yeah, each yeah. song is kind of like a planet in its own right. And I was, I, I'm, I'm now, I'm not entering into that type of mode. Now I'm gonna ask, like, what is the EP of it's coming out on Dim Mac or Warm? That's like its own galaxy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It pretty much is. It's like some of them are more closer to the sun, so you'll feel a lot more the heat and intensity. Mm -hmm. and like some are more further, further, further back, away, and you'll feel a lot more of the emotions of how cold. It is. That is amazing. I, I, I'm kind of surprised, so. It makes me wonder, like, it, it, will will we see more of like you no know, space type visuals in your work? I mean, I mean, we'll still keep the scarlet colors and the, and the lavender yeah, colors. Yeah. Will we see more of that in your visuals? Because again, the visual part, I feel like you take very, very seriously. Yeah. So, will we see more of like that type of like you no know, our world type thing, or maybe not? I feel like I the best way to put it is like dystopian. Um, future slash cyberpunk type worlds. Hmm. So like if you look at like Guardians of the Galaxy or like Star Wars, like there are like some cities that are dystopian. Um, I forgot what that's So something called. like this, I'm showing him the picture of seasons. Exactly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that kind of explains it. That's amazing to hear. So that this kind of just begs the question as well, like let's say do you think about any songs that you wish maybe you can use in like other media as well? You mentioned dystopian worlds or cyberpunk. Could you imagine like hearing this like in that type of like world in a TV show or a movie? Uh -huh. If it's a dystopian world or it was like a, a cyberpunk futuristic type world, you can hear your music like more in the background? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't understand the question. Yeah, so it's like, can you, are there any like, you know, shows or movies you can uh, like imagine okay. hearing your music in the background since we're thinking dystopian stuff we're thinking yeah, cyberpunk yeah. i'm seeing more like you no know, media put out there with a type of theme so yeah yeah could we hear like some of your music in the future in stuff like that if you want like say here's this song i feel like this would be perfect to be put in this type of yeah thing. yeah honestly like cyberpunk edge runners was such a great um show that i watched on netflix hmm. and i feel like it does it has created like an underlying like inspiration for me visually um so i definitely would love to see my music on there could you imagine also hear see hearing it if they make another blade runner movie yeah yeah that, that would be fire honestly like that would be dope I, I would love for it to be on or something else i mentioned i think i mentioned this before when i talked to print that as well since he also mentioned cyberpunk as well put put a few songs maybe in the next fallout game oh yeah video games is is something I really want to do as well. I feel like that would be perfect. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. just putting out there. I mean, I'm not in your mind. I don't have yeah, synesthesia. Yeah, yeah. I wish I did, but I don't. I'm just speaking ideas out for you. So don't take yo, it. Yo, no, really though. Like a lot of my music, um, when I first started, I was playing video games a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of my visuals, like there were times where I would like take screenshots or like take pictures of like a scene in in a video game. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, I, I want to like create something that's inspired from this. 
Yeah, it's amazing to hear. So now this kind of begs the question as well. You work with a lot of amazing people already. You work with Villa in in some of in Silver Valley Volume Three. Mm-hmm. Of course, you work with Rossi with Euphoria in yeah. Volume One, the Silver Valley, and of course you have you know the Killa and a few other people as well. We, I mentioned we're having EXE in the, in the last interview with Ophelia, Ophelia events in Volume Four, I believe. Juku of EXE. Are there any other people you wish you could collaborate with? Honestly, there's a lot. Like I will always say, G. Jones is one person that I really want to collab with um, just because he's a huge inspiration to like the glitchy part of my music mm-hmm. um, also I, I really obviously love Porter I would love to like get inside a room and collab with him and see how he picks apart his creative flow and process I don't know if I said it before but I'll say it again has he or has he not heard your sad machine flip I think I think he did because he he added like a few songs on Spotify to his playlist, so I'm pretty sure he heard it. But, it with with him, hopefully with him hearing it, that that goal of you working with Paul Robinson will be so much more closer because someone like him, I can only imagine that like you know your your sounds combined with his, maybe with nurture, maybe a little bit of worlds. But either way, you and Robinson coming together that would be absolutely incredible. As for G Jones. Luckily, I've met G. Jones' manager, so I'll make sure to put in a good word for you and let it. I'll make sure I kind of spread the word with people who know that this man here, Juku, is one you need to remember. He's doing such incredible work and already reaching to such incredible heights at, like, I think almost, like, over, what, three years in the making so far? Because I think your first song ever that you ever released on the show on Instagram was in 2019. Yeah, yeah. So that was, and, and I know that was kind of, like, a rough year for you because 2019 and even 2020, not just because of the pandemic, yeah, but yeah. because that was when you are like, really trying to kick things off. Like, you were doing a lot, you were doing your own self-release stuff, self-release flips, but also you had a few songs in the founded records, Genre, yeah, which, yeah. I, which I which I still remember and still absolutely love to this day. It's absolutely freaking incredible. I mean, I I, I appreciate you so much for you know, ha- being headstrong, having such making sure your faith was not waived. I know you had well, rest in peace to your grandmother. I know she's absolutely freaking incredible. I know she's looking at smiling down from you in heaven because what you're doing is absolutely incredible. Your journey. I just wanted to know, just was it was it like? Did you think that you would ever reach the type of level? At the moment in time, I know that in the, in the beginning it was it was rough, it wasn't easy. But yeah, did you yeah. think like are you, do you think you're finally seeing like the light at the end of the tunnel? Or are you like finally like you no know, reaching to like you no know, your own level, your own world of utopia? Yeah, I mean, I mean euphoria. Yeah, honestly, like it's been it has been rough in the beginning, and like I suffer from a lot of imposter syndrome, so it's like throughout the months and weeks and days like i'm always down in myself and i'm always that's kind of what pushes me to work harder too um but yeah like i i up until now and like these past few shows like i'm now like yo this is finally happening like this is there's there's some light that i can see and i'm really grateful for like the people around me the people that helped um believe in this project People like you too, mm-hmm. who since the beginning, ever since um, I think me and Sean's collab. Right, ever it was it was really ever since like reaching for you yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. I'm never gonna stop gushing about that song because that was a song that introduced me to you. It absolutely it absolutely moved my heart to the to his very soul. I mean, again, again, I I, I didn't want to ask this because I didn't want to I didn't want to be annoying. But I'll ask anyway, will we be hearing this song in the set? Uh, not this one. I thought so. It was never first to ask. <laughs> no, uh, I'm definitely playing it on a headline show, though. Whenever in a headline, headline show. show. Yeah. So that's something I, I, I also didn't want to mention, too, because the headline shows, I think your first one ever was in Houston, that we had Sacramento, then I think we had San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Like, is there, like, huge thing? You've done quite a lot of things regarding show-wise. You had headline shows. You yeah. are on, you had your tour shows, not just with Steve Aoki, but also with Slow Magic You're yeah. in the 10-year anniversary tour. You had, you, so you also, also did stuff, like, virtual-wise. So, not, I'm not talking about just the VR thing you did with Warmth, yeah. but mm-hmm. you did your own stream with this Another World, which I'm happy to be a part of because that was also in help with Electric Hawk, which I'm part of. I'm a content creator for it. Amazing. So, honored to be a part of their team. 
So, is there a difference between like, you know, doing a headline show or performing virtually or being on tour? Or better yet, I'll add this in the mix, being at a festival. Because yes, this man has been in two festivals, each one bigger than the last. First off, Lost in Dreams Festival, I think the first one ever, and then EDC Colorado with Lost in Dreams as well. I know I'm saying Lost in Dreams because it, 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 it still, it's still, it's going It's still, you see Colorado, Lost in Dreams Festival. Is there like a difference between like, you know, those types of shows or like, you know, any pros and cons regarding all four? Honestly, like, I don't even, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I never really think about that kind of stuff. Like, I'm always like so zoned in on, on my set and being ready for um, my set that I don't really even think about it. I think the only difference is if it is a headline show, like I'll play a lot more of my music um, than a non-headline show. So mm -hmm. like, if I'm at a festival, like there's gonna be a lot of more, a lot more people who I can like um, meet for the first time. Like they might not know my music, so I want them to know like I can play, um, I can not only play my own shit, but like on top of that, like give a good time with other people's music that I personally like and personally like. So it's so it's so, are we saying like no not headline shows? It's gonna be like a mixture of certain things, but it's also gonna be like no a few of the greatest hits. So like you'll be playing Euphoria, you'll be playing the song Single Valley, yeah. like you'll be playing most of the songs. But people know no this is who I am, this yeah. is Juku. But it's only headline shows when your is your name in the lights. You just say no, I'm gonna give you guys everything that I am. This is Juku at my core, and I have and I and I finally have the bright mindset I have the space I have the time to do so yeah exactly perfect perfect example that's amazing to hear so I so even though right now this tour again so we're we'll, we'll, so pretty much in this tour in this set we're gonna be expecting a lot of you know just more your greatest hits yeah like exactly. you know like some like some of the songs that were pretty big in the past and are starting to become pretty big right now so we'll hear some of the singles from your recent EP, mm -hmm. will we hear some songs from the first EP? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm guessing maybe like some of your collaborations I remember with Yetep, I believe, for Proximity? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Waiting. Waiting would be dope. That will, so that, so we pray, we'll, we'll, we'll probably be hearing a majority of that tonight. Yeah, that was kind of stuff, and also, like, I, I have a lot of flips that I made, so. Right. A lot of them are, like, stuff that. I think I counted 26 so far. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm not kidding. I, I mean, didn't even know I had that did one. you think I was not? Do you think all Christ. of this was not for show? I yeah. mean, let's. I mean, look at the list. Flume, rushing back, flip. Modi, Clementine, that was a flip. Four mm -hmm. Robinson, Clad Machine, that was a flip. Cashmere Cat, Free Rise Only, that was a flip. Oh Let me God. see over here. Ooh, Bentacle Control, Laquisha, that was a flip. <laughs> we have Ali and Branch with Callum Electric, that was a flip. Matthew, all my friends, that was a flip. RL Garland, no, that was a flip. Say Holy Rise, that was a flip. G. Jones and Moral Light, that was a flip. Shall I go on? Oh my God, dude. that's wild. <laughs> I didn't even know. Thank you for bringing that up because I did not even know that I had to be sick. It's crazy. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I'm just putting out a number. All I know is that it, it, it was definitely almost close to 20. Right. <laughs> but all I'm saying is just that there was that 2019, 2020 was pretty much the year of Juku flips. Yeah. So do you think we'll, find, we'll we'll expect a few more flips in the future? Like you always have that like moment in time where you want to start, start experimenting and try other songs oh, yeah. and put your own twist on them yeah there's so many songs that i want to i want to flip right now and like right now i'm in ep mode and once the ep's out like i'm gonna go fucking crazy on this on flips um i actually have this um this rumble flip that i'm only playing live so you'll hear that tonight and it's it's a new direction for like the type of like high energetic and dark so and this is gonna be like the most scarlet of them all yeah Exactly. I can hardly wait to hear that. And of course, I ask this in all my interviews, what is going to be next for Juku? What's going to be next is probably working on EP number three, um, straight into EP number three. And then on top so of that. So you really are in the EP mode. First yeah. of all, so it's not just more. You're going to go into the second EP, which is the Mac. Now okay. you're working to the third yeah. EP. Yeah. And then on top of that, like I'm, I'm doubling down on my visuals and I'm going to be working really hard to create this new innovative experience that I haven't seen yet in electronic music. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun. Um, I'm super excited. April I'm gonna be taking that off and, and 
going crazy. Like I'm actually having a 3D model version of myself, like a real version of myself, um, 3D model, um, so that I can finally use it in my 3D videos. Will we be seeing that 3D model in, the, in, in another VR experience? Yeah, yeah, so VR is definitely something that I'm trying to integrate a lot more. Um, and stuff that I'm exploring that I haven't really even talked to a lot of people about is like video games and like um, actual interactive VR where you can walk around in like the world that I've been. So, so it's, it's, it's not just like us sitting here like with, with the headset on just like looking around. Yeah, yeah. We'll actually be able to like, you know, stand up yeah, and yeah. walk yeah, through yeah, your yeah. world. Yeah. So this is the, 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 this mean that I'll be, I can even see your world in VR chat? Yeah, yeah. Well then, I gotta make some calls to a certain someone who's pretty big in the VR world. Via, I'll let you know when Juku's world is ready. I would love to hear your interview, hear your, your review on it. Again, she's pretty big in the virtual reality, has her own virtual reality show, that kind of thing. But uh, again, I'm so, the future is looking absolutely bright for Juku. I'm so honored and blessed to finally have a chance to speak with you and speak with you again. And again, it's, I'm, I, I, I don't know when I can ever hey, like do this again with you. Maybe like you know, three, four years. We actually had. I hope to God we have your own tour. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell that yeah. would be actually incredible. Yeah, I don't know yeah, if I, yeah. I don't know my access, but if it was your headline tour, I mean, hello, you are you're had two headline tours, but headline the shows. But if it was a headline tour, and like each and every show will be your name in lights, I'll be seeing Juku, 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 Juku. Who would you be bringing with you? Honestly, it. it I'd have to play that by ear. But if I did have to choose, like if my tour started tomorrow, I would definitely bring Villa. Mm -hmm. I would definitely bring Squire. Mm -hmm. Rossi's killing it, but if she would have me, like I would love to like have Rossi. It, may, maybe have her as a special guest? I mean, yeah, hello, yeah, she yeah. is kind of killing it right now. I know, she's heaven, absolutely killing it. Killing it with her Heaven Story EP. Yeah. And not to mention, of course, doing her own headline shows, yeah. sponsored by Bruns Lemonade. Yeah. So that would be quite incredible too. And really, no love for Remy EXE. What's that? No love for Remy EXE. Oh, no, definitely Remy. Yeah. About to say, you forgot about him? No, no, no. <laughs> He's killing it too, as well. We're, we talk pretty often. Uh, we're in this like group chat with like him, Squire, Darby. Um, oh, Darby's another person I would bring on as well. I do not mind me having some Darby. Darby is going to kill it this year. I'm excited because I've heard almost all the music that he's. He's working on mm -hmm. and it's like it's not so much. I'm super excited and his creative birth and vision on things is super like well detailed. So. That is amazing to hear and I can hardly wait to see what's gonna be coming next for Juku. Juku, thank you so much for not only just being on this tour, not only for all your incredible work, but I would say just for existing and blessing us and, and blessing us with your incredible work. I am honored and blessed not only be a fan of your work, but are they blessed to really be enthralled and really enter and understand the world and the mind of Juku because this is something that, this is the world that I believe more and more people need to understand and really see the beauty of. But with you on the controls for the visuals, for the music, for the feels, for the, for the scrawled colors, the lavender colors, maybe other colors, the rainbow if you must. I would really appreciate that too. Oh, yeah. let's, 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 let's make sure. I mean, who knows? Maybe you'll call your next show the Roy G. Viv show. I mean, <laughs> who knows? I mean, I want to be sure you get some love to every color, too. I mean, have you ever thought about, about Indigo? Indigo, yeah. Indigo could work. Indigo's kind of fire, too. Oh, so, yeah. I don't know. Maybe make, make a new EP regarding Indigo. Like, I don't know what type of feelings that will come out of, but I'm just putting it out there. I mean, again, I'm not Juku. I'm not in your mind. I'm just I'm just spewing ideas. <laughs> but you, again, I, I love I, it. I love it. Again, I thank you so much for just blessing us with your music, blessing us with your talents, and of course, I usually would say, you know, make sure you check him out in the in, in the Steve Aoki Hero Quest tour. But tonight is the night where we end things off with a bang. I mean, if you didn't hear Cali right now, we're starting to end off with a bang, and you're gonna be next to finish it all off. I can hardly see oh, the yeah. what the future holds for you, and hopefully, I pray to God, Steve Aoki, he collabs with you. That would be that would be amazing. That would be amazing too. I mean, you're, you're already gonna be finishing off Terminal Five, so why not? Why why not? Why why not make collaboration? Maybe maybe for for, for Dead Mac. Why not? Hell yeah. See Aoki, if you see this, make sure you keep this man in mind. Oh, it, 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 it makes you feel any better to sweeten the pot. He also has a few works in Metaverse.
Wars 2. So do a little something with that. I, 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 I'm just putting it out there. I know he's really into the NFTs right now. So you know what? Uh, Metaverse, he's doing a little bit of that too. So just putting it out there. Anyway, I gotta make sure I see this show. I gotta make sure I witness this set. Thank you guys so much for watching this Swindler Junior signing out. Love you all so much. Peace.